Hey, well, listen, thank you so much for taking the time. I mean, we've been um, through Charlie, our guy who's based up in the UK. We've been yeah, sort of right. we've been hearing about you guys for ages now, and um, and sort of stoked to get you on. Um, I mean, I, I, this, ostensibly, this is a, a little bit about rituals and your mm -hmm. and you know, your routine. Obviously, we we sell grooming products and skincare and things like that. But so we hope that we can find out a little bit about you as well because um, yeah. you're a you're a, a man of interest. So um, so yeah. So I guess the the the, the sort of start point is the Amazons. Um, yeah. You got you guys are a long way from the Amazon, Reading. So tell us a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit about how that came about. What's the what's the name and in the background there? So it's quite simply a. Um, it's like a named. We got the name from a um, a children's book in the UK. It's like a really old, uh, like nineteen twenties book called The Swallows and Amazons, which has right. had like a few kind of adaptations and things like that in terms of. I guess probably it doesn't really come out anywhere outside of the UK, but that's really what it is. And we just like that it represented kind of escapism and all that kind of stuff. It's basically a really, really um, non-controversial um, tale about like a group of kids on their summer holiday in the Lake District, which is the north of England. Yeah. And uh, I, yeah, we just loved it and uh, called uh, ourselves the Amazons. And But it seems to be morphing like our fans and we almost like, um, refer to ourselves as, as the Zons, <laughs> like a kind of, um, you know, just like we kind of cut down the timing and all that kind of stuff. So um, oh, keep, yeah. sometimes I forget we're called the Amazons because I keep on referring to us as the Zons. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the origin of the name. Awesome. The, um, and so like just stylistically, because, you know, I've read a few things, you know, you're the, the rebirth of rock and roll and all those those terrible cliches that people yeah. hang on you when you when you come out and play a good solid guitar riff um so but stylistically uh, i'm like i'm just looking at you 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 know you probably remind me more of someone like nick drake uh, you know someone like i'm trying to think the exact band or or era that you remind me of and it's sort of like a fusion um well, how would you explain how would you explain this sort of both the musically but also stylistically well um i'm glad that you said that i actually like um I'd be a bit more worried if you could kind of point out like one or two bands that we sounded almost <laughs> exactly like. But I think honestly, we're just such huge fans of music and, uh, you know, rock and roll in particular. And if we think about rock and roll as something that's been around for like 60 years, it's morphed in so many different things. And we have so many points of reference in the band um, that change all the time, like in terms of our influences, what we're being inspired by. And it changes from album to album, face to face, like, um, you know, it changes completely from what we were listening to as 16 year olds. And now I'm 26, I listen to rock and roll, but it's completely different. Like yeah. we were much more into, um, you know, I, I mean, you'd say like late seventies punk and, um, I don't know, like the kind of Brit pop thing or the, the kind of indie, um, mainstream thing of the late noughties or like, there's so many different, all like kind of classic rock. We all like, were. We all grew up on the likes of the Beatles, the Stones, Led Zeppelin, David Bowie, um, Queen, and all of that. That was our like bedrock of like music. And then um, you know we all went off and kind of discovered our own thing, and and we're all into completely different stuff. So I'm glad um, that you feel that way because we do take reference from so many different like dimensions of it all. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's the magic, right? It's like taking. Yeah in the reference points but then sort of melding them into something that's um that's fresh and new and I, think that's a, I think that's a really i think it's a positive thing i think um you know as you said earlier about like uh, you know rock and roll you know having a couple of old tired cliches and stuff and i guess that's like the way we look at it sometimes but actually like there is a positivity there's a positive aspect in having so much history to the genre and yeah. so many points that we can kind of feed off and be influenced and inspired by to just ultimately create something new just as like you know the punks uh in the late in the mid to late 70s were taking a lot of influence from the likes of like iggy pop in the late 60s and stuff as were the the grunge bands uh like nirvana or like or maybe like the more experimental stuff like 
Sonic Youth, they were taking their um, influence from like more punk bands as well as the Beatles and as well as everyone else. It's just like that kind of uh, mixing pot of lots of different styles is just can that only be a positive thing, I think. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I, in a slightly different realm, we, you know, we design packaging for our, you know, for our brand and materials. Mm. And it's the same thing, you know, there's no, there's some, I, I, I'll get the quote wrong, but there's some, it's been well referenced that there's no such thing as, you know, you know, new, a new idea anymore. You know, it's, it's sort of the repurposing of, of little bits and pieces. And, you know, I think of, you know, I, we're, just in the designing of packaging, I've taken reference from old, old sewing machines and melded them with, you know, like jazz albums and things like that, you know, and it's like, yeah, right. you know, and it's sort of like just, there's always just that beautiful little moment where you just take two existing sort of ideas, but take parts of those, repurpose them, and then it's like, all of a sudden it's a new thing. And of course, you always have to put some magic over the top of it. You can't just, you know, they don't just fit together seamlessly. And I think that's, that's sort of the creative process for me anyway. Um, and I'm sure it's, you know, if you delve deep enough back into, you know, even, you know, most creatives, it's some something there where they are either consciously or subconsciously using their knowledge base, you know? Yeah, exactly. And that's just an argument for having as much, like, spreading your uh, having a real range of like influences and stuff it's all about like the stuff that you like have inputted into you that affects like the output that you put out creatively and stuff and then you just put your own like personality on it and this is exactly what you've done there with you as you were saying the two those two elements that wouldn't work together but they do work together because you make them work together with your own like personality your own spin on it which is exactly the same with music i think yeah the, um, well, we better ask you something a little bit around uh, rituals and grooming. So yeah. I imagine, like you know, uh, I've been in. I've, I'm in a band. I won't. I won't promote my own band here. But like, I've yeah. been, what, what's the name of the band? Uh, it's called the Camel Toes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I, <laughs> we don't play a lot of gigs. I'll tell. I'll give you the heads up, Matt. Right. Um, <laughs> but um, as if I, I've got an Irish friend, and he said at best, he said. Um, Dion, I have my own sense of timing, and uh, I think like that's right. my <laughs> that's how I play guitar with my own sense of timing. So yeah, poor, <laughs> poor old drummer so, struggles yeah. to keep up. But um, but uh, my, the the reference point is that uh, in, from um, you know bands historically, where they you know start with not much money and and you know living together in a flat or travel in your case traveling around in a beaten up old van. Um, yeah. So probably. From the early days to now, how have you, you know, how are you looking after yourself? Are you, are you shaving, you're obviously not shaving at the moment, being in, maybe that's COVID lockdown uh, uh, bed there, but. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I haven't been using much of the, the old school <laughs> shaving cream or anything like that. Um, I was actually just on a FaceTime with one of our, our old friends who, um, a model called Jess Grief. She basically went on tour of us and like, um, was like a photographer and then on the UK tour we like gave her a call and we're like you've got a great voice do you want to like be like a backing vocalist for, for us <laughs> and she was like yeah of course and I remember distinctly about like 18 months two years ago we were on the road and we were like talking to her about like you know like facial regimes like moisturizing and like um basically just like how do you wash your face because she was like do you not like wash your face we we're like oh yeah like you know, when you're in the shower and you just wash your face and all that kind of stuff. She was like, do you not like moisturise? And we were like, no, <laughs> should we? She was like, do you not use sun cream and all this kind of stuff? And we were like, oh, my God. Because like, she was obviously very conscious about it. I remember that conversation. We, we got out of the van somewhere <laughs> in Europe like, oh, my God, we need moisturiser. We need facial cleanser. We need a good uh, scrub. We need everything. And we got so much more interested in it because of that kind of angle of being on tour because it is so dirty. Yes. And um, we're like, why are we getting spots all the time? That is so weird. But it's like clearly because we're not giving it enough like attention and stuff like that. So it's been like a quite recent um, wow. version. But, you know, like it was really hard to like kind of, I think when you're like, in a band and you like making music and stuff you want your life to like reflect that like when i don't want to just like be in the same path of everyone i want to kind of uh find my own identity when it comes to like pretty much every facet of my existence and that yeah. includes like when we were like using high street brands and stuff like that with like 
uh, you know, uh, uh, grooming regime. It just didn't feel right. We were like, there's got to be more to this. And let me, so I, I'd forgotten what the question was. But I'm going to carry on. We <laughs> were in Australia on tour. We were in Australia on tour and we were in Melbourne, which we thought was the coolest place ever. It was the last city that we were in. And uh, we just went into this kind of perfume kind of, of like um grooming store and um there was this whole section for men and we were looking through all of them and trying from disaster core eye we were like oh my god this is the coolest stuff yeah. like, wow i feel like this totally this is like our image in like grooming stuff we've got to get on this and yeah. uh, i remember getting some stuff and um and then dropping you guys a message like we love this like we don't do this a lot like we don't think bands should sell out and like um just do anything for the sake of it but we were like right if you if you need a voice in the uk from a music angle when it comes to this kind of stuff we love this stuff we like buy into it so um oh, no, well, that's, yeah no well that's great sir are they um I, I have to come back i've got a, i've got another rock and roll story which i have to say but i mean you know that's, yeah. that, that whole thing of like identifying though you know we sort of our catchphrase is you know you know it, we see a lot of people saying oh this is how you should apply a moisturizer or this is how you should use a product or this is how you wear a t-shirt or whatever and it's like that's become very much the mode of the moment everyone's an expert everyone's telling you how to do these really basic things and it's like it's like it's, there's no right way it's like you no. do it your way do it your way create take the brands you love take the products you love take this the rituals and routines you love and create your own and that resonated what you said earlier you know we want to do things our way and have and be unique and have our and that's the type of brand we want to be so we sort of identify with people um, who are in, who think that way as well? So I, I think it's you know we we it's great we can um, we we love working with you guys. But the, um but just really quickly, my first ever famous rock and roll story was I just launched yeah. the brand. This is eight nine years ago, and um, <clears throat> I got into a local hotel, uh, you know the gift shop in the hotel, which is, and um, <laughs> I get this, and we had we had we had this product which now is called rock and roll, but. It was previously named after a David Bowie song, so it was the full name was Rock and Roll Suicide for obvious oh. for obvious reasons. We've sort of dropped the the suicide, but um, so we just kept the rock and roll. But you know, by the way, it's a great David Bowie reference song if, if you, you, you know it. But um, so it wasn't about suicide, but anyway, that's just by the by. But so the, at this time, the product was called Rock and Roll Suicide, and I get this um, call about you know three in the afternoon this really excited um, lady who owned the store and she goes, <laughs> she goes, oh, you'll never, you'll never guess who's just been in the store. And I was like, oh, no, no. <laughs> and she goes, oh, so she's, oh, Ozzy Osbourne has just walked in and he's just bought two rock and roll suicides. <laughs> and I was oh like, oh my God. Oh my God, I've made it. So, um, so yeah, he was, right. it was wow. the last tour with Black Sabbath. So he was the last time they were touring and whatever. And they happened to be in, and I don't know, he just went down to the gift shop and he saw this. And I thought, well, what better, what better sort of recommendation than Ozzy Osbourne buying Rock and Roll Suicide? I don't think you can. I don't think you can. Unless you know himself, of course. But like Ozzy Osbourne is, oh my God, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. I love that. It certainly caught his eye. And he was like, finally. <laughs> cool face scrub. Hey, so, well, a bit, so style, like, you know, um, just as a guy, like it now, like, you know, more than ever, it feels like, you know, being in the front man of a band, you, you, that's something you have to consciously sort of think about. Is it something that you, has evolved for you? Are you, are you the same man that walked out onto the stage, you know, when you met, was it Chris that you met at school or was it who, but what was the sort of like the whole, um, back and back, I was, I was reading something, I was reading something and you're, yeah, when you all guys, guys all got back together and you played in a little club back in uh, in Reading the first time or something. Yeah, so, right. The same guys so, who walked out now to then? Oh, man. No, I mean, it's been a... I mean, we've always loved careers and, like, kind of artistic journeys. We've always looked up to them that are a journey and are, like, um, are, a, like, that kind of challenge the... The, their audiences and keep on like morphing i mean we talked about david bowie we talked about even ozzy osbourne like these are all people who've kind of developed and stuff i guess and um, there's also there's also an argument of finding something and sticking to it like like an acdc who obviously very um yeah. 
you know, successful with that. But we've always been drawn to that kind of thing. So we've always kind of, uh, yeah, wanted to wanted to change and wanted to just basically feed the book, like, uh, you know, fight the boredom, honestly, like, we we kind of had a look for the first album and then wanted to step up and wanted to explore with future dust i personally wanted to explore um i was really getting into um like kind of uh these like western kind of suits that i saw on like instagram and like this kind of custom um rhinestone type look i was like how can i like put my spin on that um so um just did a lot of research and I thought I like the idea of being someone completely different on a stage to how you are on yes. stage, basically. I know the lines are slightly more blurred in the age of like social media where nothing ever shuts off, but um I just wanted to make that differentiation and I I, I honestly like got this suit and then I uh met up with this uh embroiderer kind of um seamstress in los angeles called rusty cuts oh no she's called rose cuts now judith amazing and uh we just kind of like um you know designed this suit and uh and that was the kind of defining look of the last record future dust and um i wore that on stage and it honestly it just changed the way i acted as a front man i felt like you could get away with more stuff i felt like it was just a little bit more reserved on the first record pretty much on every kind of angle of it really and then uh, we've just freed up and we've decided we've kind of the more we've grown into our own taste and the more we've kind of developed our own opinion on things like how we look and how we style and stuff and how that has a relationship to the music the more confident we've got with that the more risks that we're willing to take and I think we're already like kind of shedding off the suits and all the kind of smarter and more slick wear of the last album and kind of kind of organically morphing into something completely new which i don't know what will exactly be yet i know i've got references about what i like but you kind of have to try them and we've got this period of time where we're not really doing much but we can try lots of things out which is really exciting what's the so how much of that you know if it's not a mask per se but how much of that presentation allowed you to come outside of yourself obviously on stage is you, you more than even the rest of the band has to really project you know you if all eyes are on you so that's a really hard thing to do i mean anyone who's done any sort of public speaking of any kind mm. or been in front of any sort of crowd will, will attest to mm. so how much how much of being able to put on that moment like i've seen some footage of you guys backstage and it's almost like you're you know it's almost like a you're charging up like you've got a big match or, you know or something to go on to so oh, it, it, yeah yeah and, and is there a ritual is there a sort of a ritual that you have you know got before going on stage yeah definitely it's um you know what like it's so funny in answer to the first question it surprised me putting on the suit how much it gave it just turned me into a completely different person yeah. and i felt like possessed it was it was like a completely different energy when i put the suit on walked onto the stage i just felt like I'm wearing like a suit with like rhinestones on, like it's just stupid <laughs> star lightning bolts and stuff. Like you, when you're playing to thousands of people in that suit, you're like, this is who I am, uh, <laughs> which is so funny. And, and to, into your answer, yes, the ritual. Yeah. I actually have to like shower and like clean and be like, um smelling like amazing all the products on even though i'm on stage and no one's gonna smell me but like i have to i can't just like get like my dirty tall sweaty body from the van and then just put the suit on it's never gonna work i have to like get ready i have to like respect what i'm gonna put on with the stage and stuff so that is a ritual it's kind of like you're just basically getting ready for a big night out that's yeah. essentially what it is. <laughs> <laughs> a very big night out with you yeah, yeah. 30,000 friends the, um look um and well look uh, we're all the way down here in New Zealand what do you know do you know anything about New Zealand or any of our music scene if you know who if you, is there anyone that you've heard of like we've, we've only got a couple we've who, who have we got at the moment you might have you did Lord or anyone like that come across your path up there yeah um we loved um the naked and famous and they first came yeah great wicked and uh yeah there was there was a whole scene around that 
that we were into uh, in the MySpace days. I remember a couple of bands coming from that. I remember, I think honestly, yeah, Lord, I think Melodrama, the last record was incredible. I was a huge fan of that. Um, There's a cool little brand, um, band, band, not brand, uh, called Marlin's Dreaming. Um, uh, oh, and, yeah, so they're a good little Dunedin sound. There's a university town called Dunedin and historically they've, that was where a lot of our, in the, this is the 80s probably, it really formed. And there was a record label down there called Flying Nun. Right. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I think about that. Produced, it, they, they had this real sort of in, interesting sound, which was quite unique. Um, right. And what's happened now recently, there's a few a whole new wave of bands in the 2000s mm. and last five, five, five years, really, to have come out of Dunedin. So it's sort of a resurgence. So go and check that out if you, if you get five minutes. But, um, yeah. but um, look, um, you know, in terms of... Um, I guess um, you've given us lots of good time. I have to ask one thing. I've, um, I see you've got a flying V. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so I've got to, I'm, I'm like, I, so I used to play cricket, and, and when I grew up playing cricket, the guy with the whip, there was, it was always the whip, the guy with the rich dad in the team. Right. Would, he would have the um, the best bat, and I, I didn't have a very good bat, and I, I would always, but I, I knew how to use my bat, you know, so I was, I was reasonable, reasonable with it. But like, I always looked at the guy with the, with the best bat and I was like, oh, he can't play. And so now that I, 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 when I retired from sport and I had a bit of money, I bought myself a Gibson SG. And as soon as I bought it, instead of being really elated, I was like, oh no, I'm that guy with the really expensive bat. Yeah, right. <laughs> So, so, but the two the two guitars I wanted was an SG and a and a flying V, and so oh, I've never, bought, I've never right. bought a flying V because I I got that first that first thing I was like oh I'm not a good enough guitarist. So, um, but tell me tell me favorite guitar. Um, I'd say actually favorite guitar has been I've been playing like this uh, black Les Paul for the last four or five years now, which has been very very good to me like it's definitely been uh yeah I've, I've loved having that guitar the flying v is audacious i love having the flying v because you never see them anymore and yeah i saw like the likes of Jimi hendrix uh tom petty mark boland from t-rex they all have yeah. flying v. like it's not i don't think it should be like just written off as just a purely like, hard rock or whatever guitar um which is it's true. yeah when you had the big gray suit on and you got the flying v i was like yeah man i want, I want one. I made me want one again i was like yeah i want to fly v again. yeah i mean the last record we just wanted to be the most the last record future dust was all about especially with the live show was just being as unapologetically rock and roll or whatever we thought rock and roll was just like in its purest form and it was like having the <laughs> the suit with the stars on and having the um you know the flying v guitar just being as silly as possible um so yeah i love it it's wicked you should get it get it uh, no i need to at least i need to at least get a little bit better but um that's okay I'll, I'll, I'll one day one day <laughs> it can be my yeah it's a you gotta have goals right you gotta have goals yeah yeah you got you got <laughs> something to aim for hey um well listen um uh, last question: What's your? Have you got a favourite TND product? What's the What's the one? The, the one product that you use that sort of that you love? Me and the boys uh, swear by the face scrub. Um, yeah. Though I'm a big fan of the um, the moisturiser. It smells so good, and yeah. uh, the deodorant is also fantastic. Um, but I would also I would say don't shave and use the face scrub on the same day. <laughs> I've done that, <laughs> and it hurt. Like shave and I'm like, okay, I'll make my like face really clean now. It's all shaven and it's like so painful. <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah, no, we love we love it, man. It's great. I want next time if I had shorter hair, I'd go for the cold train clay because yeah. it's called cold train clay. Um, oh, yeah. don't, cut, don't cut your hair, Matt. I'm, like, look, this is what happens. Don't cut it. <laughs> well, yeah, well. Got, cherish it while you've got it, man. I will. <laughs> <laughs> no um hey um listen so great to to catch up and could have talked for ages but we you know we've got to keep everything into it so we hope people will listen to this but um so um but listen we'll we'll get back in touch at some point um and please do come to new zealand we'll, we'll oh, do it down here to promote you, but, um, love, 
to come to New Zealand <laughs> even more than Australia. Oh, yeah, you know what to say. It just one tip though come in summer, don't come in winter. <laughs> oh, was it? Do you guys have like snowy winters? Yeah, oh, yeah, the South Island does, but oh, right. yeah, it's rainy and wet. It's a bit like uh, not quite as cold as London up here, but because like, we're in the North Island, but yeah, come in summer. That's my advice. Okay. Yeah, you will need sunscreen for that. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I will definitely. Hey, thanks, man. Awesome to meet you. Yeah, good to meet you as well, Dion, man. Nice one. See you, mate. See you, dude. Bye.